Hi everybody, welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a July garden tour for you. I garden in Chicago, which is uh, zone 5B slash 6A. I have two raised beds in the back of my garage along with multiple uh, pots and some raised containers um, around my yard. So we're gonna go and see what I've got growing there. Um, my garden is going to be in a little bit of a transitional period in the next week or so as I prepare to plant my fall garden. Um, so as we're back there, I will talk a little bit about my plans for that and what's gonna go where. It is currently July 11th. Everything that you are gonna see back there with the exception of my herbs, I started myself from seeds. So come on with me to the garden and I'll show you what I've got. All right, so this is my garlic. It is coming along really nicely. Um, you wanna harvest your garlic when about a third of the bottom leaves have died back. So this is pretty much there. It can be harvested any day. Um, I am gonna let it go for maybe another week and a half or two weeks maybe, um, but for the most part, this is this is the garlic and it's, it's looking great. Um, once I harvest this out, I will be replacing it with uh, beets and carrots and those take roughly about 65 to 70 days or so. Um, to come to maturity so those will be ready just in time for a fall harvest and then back here i've got my tomatoes so i've got the dr witchy which i've got one starting to form here sun golds got a ton of sun golds on this um, I just did a video, I just posted a video. Oop, there's one that's blushing, very exciting. Um, I just did a video on single stemming tomatoes and how I kind of prune them and support them. So I can link that above for you to see. This is a Paul Robeson, and then this is a Verona tomato. These are kind of like mini Romas, um, that's the shape of them. And then coming down here, I've got my herbs. I just did a pretty big herb harvest, so these don't look as lush as they did um, about a week or so ago, but I've got rosemary, Thai basil, um, sage, regular Genovese basil, purple basil back there. I've got parsley, um, lemon verbana, and lemon balm. And then moving back, I've got my okra plant. He just made it back into the garden. He was infested with something. I don't, I don't know if it was aphids or what, but he had little black bugs all over him. So I had to wash off his leaves. I gave him a neem oil treatment and then he was quarantined uh, for a couple weeks. So he's very happy to be back amongst uh, his little plant buddies. <laughs> And then I moved my dahlia plant over here, um, hoping to attract some pollinators. I have had a lot of trouble with pollinators this year, just not seeing them in the numbers that I usually see them in. So I'm hoping by getting some flowers back here, that will help that. And then moving on to my pepper bed, which is just coming along swimmingly. Um, I did what is called topping pepper plants, which I have never done. I did it for the first time this year. And what that is, is you cut the top of the pepper plant off in order to grow kind of a bushier plant. And so far it has worked really, really nicely. So what I've got in here, I've got two shishitos up front. These are mini bells. This is the shape of them here. Um, can you see that? Yeah. Little mini bell. That is a banana pepper. And then in the back, I've got a cherry bomb pepper and a Melrose pepper. And then I've got my Swiss shard, my rainbow shard here. Um, along the back trellis here, I just planted some beans and I have those boxes there to keep the moisture in while they germinate. And then this is a ground cherry. I used to have mustard in here, but I pulled it because I wanted to plant um, the shard there and I wanted to plant the um, the ground cherry there. So I am going to be putting in here some mustard, maybe some spinach, um, possibly some arugula. I don't have all of the uh, plants sort of planned out yet, but um, it will. this will be kind of like a fall greens bed. And then coming back here, I've got the raspberry cane, which I still haven't done anything with and is growing wild. So hopefully we'll figure that out by the next garden tour. This is my onion bed totally wild ready to be harvested um, i have something in my dehydrator right now but as soon as that is done i will be cutting all of this down and dehydrating these so that i can make my onion mix that i make um, my arugula is looking really sad because i just did a major harvest but i promise it is healthy and and good it just it looks really bad because i literally just harvested like everything off of it <laughs> and then i've got my thyme plant here 
and then um, this is just a little dahlia plant. I picked this up at a local garden center again, just hopefully trying to get some pollinators back here because I've just been having some trouble with that. But on my arch, my cucamelons are coming along really nicely and they are starting to sprout. And then over here, I've got purslane. This has been my most surprising grow of the year. I picked this up at a garden sale because it said it had the highest omega-3s of any green. And it just has like a really light citrusy flavor and it has these delicate little yellow flowers. I just love this plant. I don't know what it is about it, but it brings me so much joy and it's delicious. So win-win. And then this is my calendula and my lavender. Obviously the calendula is not getting enough sun because it is <laughs> absolutely leaning outside of this wine barrel. So probably won't put that in there next year, but you know, I don't know, we'll see. All right, we're gonna swing around to my tomato plant. So this is the Tumbling Tom tomato plant and it has just a ton of little tomatoes on it. I'm really excited. Um, let me come around this way. The only thing with this guy is that he is so heavy with tomatoes that I noticed this morning the stem had snapped. So I tied it up with some tomato tape and I'm hoping that it still gets enough water and it doesn't die. But so far this is just an awesome cherry tomato plant. So if you have a small space and you're looking for something, I would highly recommend um, did I say this was a Tumbling Tom? It's not. It's a Cherry Falls. But Tumbling Tom is also a variety um, of tomato. All right, moving along. Again, I just harvested a lot of my mint, so not looking as lush as it usually does, but we've got mint here, got mint here, and then I've got my trailing nasturtium, which is coming along. Um, no flowers yet, but definitely coming coming along really really nicely unfortunately I don't know what happened with my blueberries but I had a ton of blooms on there and then what happened was all of the little buds just kind of dried up and fell off so like this I'm not sure why that happened if anybody knows anything about blueberries leave a comment down below let me know what happened because that happened on both plants um, and this happened last year too. So I don't know if this is a nutrient problem. I don't know if they're not getting enough sun. Um, I do have one ripe blueberry. Oh, two, two. This is great. So I've got two blueberry harvest 2022. Two of them. There you go. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't quite know what happened, but other than that, they look really healthy. So I just, I think maybe they're not getting enough sun under the patio here. Um, this does get direct sun in the morning. It gets a little bit shaded for about three hours in the afternoon and then it gets evening sun. So I don't know, but anyway, leave a comment down below if you know about blueberries. All right, we're gonna head on up. Okay, so this is my kale plant and I have been really battling with the caterpillars on it. Um, you know what they say though, if there aren't pests in your garden, then your garden is not an ecosystem. So I'm trying to keep a, an open mind about it, but um, the plant is looking a little sad right now because I did just take off a whole bunch of leaves that had eggs and uh, caterpillars and stuff on them. So hopefully he bounces back. Hopefully I've got them all. If I don't, this might just be a battle that I'm fighting all summer long. And then back there is a stevia plant. I don't love the taste of stevia, but I do like to mix it in with teas. I do like to dry it and then mix it in with teas. Um, I've got another dahlia plant just taking its time to bloom, but I do have some buds on there. And then my watermelon plant is just surprising the heck out of me. I uh, did not think that this was going to do very well and <laughs> I've actually got some watermelon, which is so cool. Okay, so I was hoping to have this done for you by the time I filmed this video, but it just didn't work out that way. Um, but these are stackable planters that I got at the Dollar Tree and my husband built this wooden apparatus thing so that we could move it. Um, going to be transferring all of my strawberries from that bed into here. 
Um, and then I was wanted to be able to move it so that we could move it into the garage because I don't think I'll be able to overwinter the entire thing outside. I think it's going to get too cold. But I think if I bring it into the garage, it'll be cold enough to overwinter the strawberries, but not so cold that they freeze. So um, hopefully that will be ready for you by the next video. Okay, so this is my cucumber plant and I'm having some trouble with this one too. So what's going on is that it's putting out these healthy fruits and some of them are definitely growing. But then a lot of them will just go like this. They'll kind of dry off, they'll turn yellow and the plant kind of kicks them off. Let me see if I can find like a super dead one. Um, there's one that kind of like just dried off and I've read that that is a pollinator problem. So I just planted some borage seeds in the bottom of the bed there. Um, pollinators really like the borage and hopefully we can get some of those in there because I don't want to lose any more cucumbers, man. But I do have some healthy fruits on there. This one looks like he's ready to be harvested. So got some healthy ones back there. So it's not like a total loss, but a little bit of a puzzle for me. This is my hot pepper bed and it is, let me see, what do I have in here? I've got cayenne in the back. I've got a Thai chili up here. This is a chocolate habanero. He's a little bit behind, but he's always kind of a slow producer and kind of in the beginning. Um, back there, I've got, I think that one back there is the Serrano and this one is the chili de arbo. They might be the other way around, but either way, that's what's in here. And then I've got just like a ton of sport peppers. Look at this. These are my sport peppers. So I will be harvesting and pickling those um, sometime this week. Um, you want to harvest your peppers because it tells the plant to produce more. And then down here is my rose bush. This thing has surprised me so much. So I got this from a neighbor. She was giving it away. And I don't know anything about roses. So I don't know if all white roses start out as this blush color, but they start out as this beautiful blush. And then they turn like white, white. Um, but this is coming along, bringing me a lot of joy. And then my ginger plant. I just think ginger is such a cool looking plant. I mean, I love ginger. I would grow ginger anyway because I like it, but it's just so cool looking. Okay, I don't think I showed you this last time, but traveling up my stairs, I do have a couple of herbs up here in pots. This is a garlic chive plant that I thought was dead that came back to life. So I'm just letting it do its thing. Same with this, oregano, um, thought it was dead, totally started coming back to life so just letting it do its thing um, this is a bay laurel plant this is uh, winter savory and if you are not growing this this is the herb that you should be growing in your garden if you like rosemary and you like oregano this is a cross basically between the two I got this last year on accident I thought I was buying summer savory and I bought this and such a happy accident will be in my garden like forever and I'm actually thinking of putting it in the ground next year because that's how much I like it so this is my oregano plant and then I've got lemon thyme sad little violas that I think died they may bounce back we'll see and then this is uh, marjoram and then traveling further up the stairs, where do you see these freaking marigolds? Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for the marigolds? What? These are just stunning. Stunning. Like, it blows my mind that I'm growing this right now. Orange and yellow. I've got some creeping Jenny in the middle there. Like, at, this literally takes my breath away every morning when I when I come out and see these. Just unreal. Okay, it's starting to rain, so let's head up to the front and I'll show you the native um, flower bed that I have going on and hopefully I can do that before the rain starts coming down too hard. Okay, so I've got a black-eyed Susan here. I've got some blooms starting to form. This is um, high sock and I'm a little bit torn whether I should harvest this because I love the way that it tastes. Um, I love to make tea out of this or if I should leave it because I see a ton of bees on it and I don't know if I want to leave it for the bees or to harvest it for me. Maybe I can do a little half and half, you know, share with, share with the bees there. This is wild bergamot. 
Um, that is an Ohio goldenrod. That is supposed to bloom kind of in September or October. When I had originally bought these plants, I was kind of talking about the fact that I wanted blooms um, not all at one time. I did want sort of a variety uh, of bloom time, and so that one is more of a fall blooming. That back there is an aster. I also think that's a little bit later of a bloom. This one in the middle here has been such a surprise. This is called a purple prairie clover. Purp sorry. This is called a purple prairie clover. And they start out like this, kind of with these little purple flowers. And then these purple flowers bloom like all the way up until um, they finish. So I, I just think that is so cool looking. I love it. All right, over here we've got spiderwort. Again, super delicate purple flowers. Really love this one as well. This was milkweed that I, supposedly milkweed, I don't know. Supposedly milkweed that I got from a neighbor. Um, it has literally looked like this though since I planted it. So it's not dead, but it's also not growing. So I don't know, just gonna leave it there, let it do its thing and hope for the best for next year because so far, I don't know, a little stunted. And then I've got some gomphrea popping up, finally have some blooms starting to form. And then under my daughter's gigantic sunflower leaves, I've got, I don't even know if I can find them, holy moly. Um, I've got some stock flowers and then back there are straw flowers. Those are kind of a little bit later bloom too. Those will bloom in the fall. My daughter's sunflowers that she got for free. And again, I told her they are too big for this space and she's three, so she was hearing none of it, but they're looking pretty good. <laughs> Shading out a little bit of the other plants, but I do have one starting to open up, so hopefully we'll get um, a sunflower head there. But anyway, that, that's, the, uh, that's the flower bed in the front. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me to share my garden space with you and I will see you back here next month for another garden tour. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share this with a gardener in your life, share this with anybody that just likes plants or likes being outside. Um, follow me on Instagram and all the things. I'll leave everything in the description box down below. And um, yeah, happy harvesting.